Ah, you scared me. That's that's fantastic. That, 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 yeah. you hear that? I I heard it. It said yeah, I heard it. now recording. <laughs> Excellent. That's it. Uh, that's it. It's already better than cages. <laughs> I know, right? In any case, we are going to begin. Hello and welcome to the third Grand Line Review Reverie. Thank you all once again for taking the time out of your day. I know some of you are up quite late at the moment and simultaneously, I know that some of you need to stop clicking. <laughs> <laughs> what was I about to say? Whatever the case, thank you very much for being here to essentially share the love of One Piece. Just a few quick things about how this is going to work. Things are going to be structured very similarly to the last two. I have divided you all into small groups. And one by one, I will be calling upon the people in those groups to pop on their mics and actively participate in the voice chat, where we will be discussing the individual topics you have prepared. A lot of you have TBDs. You have prepared a topic, I hope. In any case, when your panel isn't active, I encourage you all to participate through the Reverie text chat, which we'll be keeping an eye on as well. Also, just like last time, we're going to be implementing a time limit, which will be around 10 minutes. This is a maximum, not a minimum. And this is just to ensure that everyone gets a fair amount of time to participate. So I apologize if I end up having to cut you off. Um, so just to clarify, uh, if it's not our panel, we can still be in the voice chat. We just can't talk. Correct. And you also can't click or type with the mic on. Oops. <laughs> Push to talk is encouraged. It's highly encouraged and in fact probably mandatory. Well just mute yourself, yeah. Nice courtesy mute. Uh so I would welcome the first panel, but two out of the three people aren't here, so we're going to cobble together a panel. So let's officially welcome Tess. Hello. As well as Blazon and Confused Potato. Would you all like to step into the voice chat? Hello, everyone. Let's introduce ourselves, starting with Blazin. Tell us a bit about yourself. Hey, um, I'm Blazin. My name is actually Kim Major. Um, from the U.S., New York, to be precise. This is my second reverie. I missed the, I missed the actual second one. I was very upset. So I'm very happy to be here for this one. Um, I literally woke up minutes before I popped on. So as, many, as soon as you guys saw me, I was literally just opening my eyes. So uh, yeah, it's kind of a rush job for me this morning, but I'm um, happy to be here. And uh, I'm glad that we'll be able to discuss some One Piece this morning. Well, morning for me. Yeah, good morning. Happy to have you here. Let's move on to Confused Potato. Tell us a bit about yourself, sir. Well, uh, not much to say. I'm 19. I work in uh, IT at the moment. Uh, I go by Potato, but my actual name is Geo. And yeah, I'm pretty happy to participate today. We are happy to have you participating. And finally, Tess, please introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Tess. Uh, well, I use that for acting. Uh, it's really early. for. Well, it's not really that much early. Uh, I'm not good at talking. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Well, in that case, welcome, Tess. It is also a pleasure to have you here. We are going to uh, start with Blazin. Please present your topic to the reverie. Mm. Awkward silence ensues. <laughs> no, no awkward silence. <laughs> Just looking up. I had it written because I don't. I didn't. I didn't know if my topic was already discussed or anything like that. So, this is kind of a left field topic because my wife brought it up. I was wondering, do you think that they will ship any of the characters at the end of the series? Hmm. Very interesting question. Uh, I have some strong opinions about this, but let's start with confused potato for fun. Do you think they will ship any characters by the end of the series? Ship as in they get together? Yeah, okay. Yes, ship as in uh, relationship. Well, Boa Hancock and uh, Luffy is a pretty obvious thing to happen. Um, since in Shonen, these hit, like, couples aren't really hinted most of the times, but like you kind of see, okay, at the end, or when it comes to getting kids or something like that, that they usually end up together one way or another, and then you ask yourself, how did this even happen? But it happens kind of like um, some Goku suddenly having <laughs> a kid. But other than that, I don't know. Like crew-wise, 
officially they're all just crewmates so it's like maybe robin and zoro i'm not too sure in general even the creator of uh one piece oda said he's not too big on romances especially not at the moment so i'm really not sure i can't see some uh couples here and there at the end of the series like for example boanko and luffy but it's not exactly sometimes they hint here and there but other than that yeah I'm not too it's sure. interesting that you say not at the moment because I think Oda's actually had his most romantic period ever with the whole um oh, yeah. the Cake Island yeah, yeah, and with the whole love story of putting in Sanji. That was very unusual territory for him. That is very true. Yeah, that's. Uh, I also, I also, I was like, okay, this is never going to happen. Absolutely not. Something's gonna go wrong. Uh, what I didn't expect though was, uh, uh, what's her name again? Pudding. Yeah. To fall for Sanji, that uh, I I absolutely was not expecting that, so I was very positively surprised, and I actually liked them together a lot. It was slightly heartbreaking, I will admit that. Oh, uh, I oh, did yeah. not expect that at all. Definitely. Uh, Tess, do you see anyone being shipped by the end of the series? Uh sort of. Early on in the series, Oda said that he didn't really plan on the Straw Hats like intertwining like that, but uh. I do, I do think that it is possible, especially now with Whole Cake happening. Well, now that Whole Cake is done, I personally ship Robin and Frankie. But uh, I like to think at the end of the series that Zoro will inevitably get lost in, into Sigi's eyes and that it'll happen. <laughs> <laughs> that is a brilliant answer. That's the Marine um, chick, right? Yes. Yes, the uh, Kuino lookalike. <laughs> yes, I agree with that one. I do believe that because a lot of people ship Zoro and Robin, which I did. I I was I was on that boat for a little bit, but I see him more with um Tichigi. Definitely, personally, I'm going to admit. And, that. Yeah, go for personally, it. Personally, I go left field. I go for Luffy and Nami. I don't know. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I, they they have a they have, they have a relationship. I I just I don't know. It's I think there's there's a bond there between them. So I think I think it's gonna be Luffy and Lamy. And I wouldn't mind actually Sanji going back to pudding at the after everything is said and done. There's there's one thing I uh I noticed a lot is um not not exactly ship wise, but uh Robin and Zoro are pretty much uh Rayleigh and Shecky, was that her name? Yes. Yeah. They they are pretty much the same thing like you could basically uh, skip 20 years and put them at the same place where uh shaggy and rayleigh are right now yeah give robin a haircut and zoro yeah. scars and yeah we've got Pretty. it happening it's an interesting thing i personally before hancock was introduced i could have seen a luffy nami you know at the very very end of one piece being a thing but i think it will go more the uh the direction of dragon ball where hancock will just forcibly marry luffy at some point <laughs> definitely forcibly not droid brings up a uh, a very good point uh, usopp and kaya that's that's got to happen yeah definitely. oh yeah i don't really see nami nami and luffy getting together they don't they don't really feel feel that way to me they're more like a brother sister kind of thing yeah but it kind of feels that way with luffy and any female pretty much he's hardcore friend zoning <laughs> yeah very she's much. Always, he, she's, luffy's friend zoned three princesses now true True. I'll keep, wow, yeah, true. <laughs> that's the actual uh, final island of One Piece. <laughs> Gumma Gumma oh. in a friend zone. Luffy's <laughs> ultimate attack. Definitely. Well, like, Gami's always getting Luffy out of trouble, well, always getting Luffy out of trouble, and she's always looking at his for his best means, so it could be looked at either way, but um, I've always, you know, I tend to think it may go the other way, later down the line, of course. Maybe, and I'll, I'll admit that Luffy and Nami have quite a strong bond i think much stronger than most other members of the crew i don't quite know why that is but she seems to be the one who gets you know trusted with his hat more often than not and things like that huh yeah that's true how do you think of that on the morning one occasions he's given her the hat and said all this yeah and i think she's the only one who's held it on more than one occasion don't quote me on that i'm probably wrong i think usopp has done that usopp did it when uh for the davy back fight i can't think of another scenario there I think he held it during Thriller Bark. Like, it wasn't, like, giving him it because he need, like he didn't want it being held, because he couldn't help it. I think he had it, he gave it to Usopp because, like, he was tired, like he was passing out or something. Quite possibly. I don't remember Thriller Bark in that sort of detail. 
But uh, going back to the actual uh, question of shipping, as much as I don't think it'll happen until, you know, like the very few last chapters of the series, Zoro Tashigi, probably a thing. Sanji Pudding, I can see that being a thing. Also, I quite like the idea of um, Frankie and Robin. Bit of a <laughs> left field choice there. Oh, yeah. Frabin fan. <laughs> <laughs> Frabin. Oh, that's, that's not bad. I never thought of Frankie and uh, Robin. That's, that is left field. He burnt blueprints for her. It is, but you know, they're both pretty much the same age, and I don't know. There's just something about it. A but chopper and that actually... reindeer girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah chopper actually... and the mink. <laughs> Think about how many how how many ships Robin can help Frankie build with her with her devil fuel pro- devil fuel pro- though. Exactly, they could start their own business that would rival Galilaw. Huh. I don't think she would. Oh, actually, yeah. now now that I, the more I think about it, the more I see it working. But at the same time, huh? I don't know. <laughs> of course, we're all forgetting the biggest ship of all, which is Brooke and Laboon. Oh, heartwarming. Man, what that will happen. <laughs> Madly tears will be shed. Holy shit. Yeah, they're going to produce baby skeleton waves. <laughs> Mike, I wasn't going to say it. All right, but I think that uh, satisfactorily concludes the uh, shipping topic. Thank you very much, Blazon. We are going to go to Tess now. Would you like to present your topic to the Reverie? Uh, my topic is on is on the day and night cycle of One Piece. Initially, it was going to be on the moon, but then I was like, oh, wait, I typed this wrong, and now I have to do day and night cycle, but that still works. You, you don't have to do that. You can uh, present whatever you'd like. I'm still fine with this because uh, because you can do a lot with it because... Uh, the One Piece world has like seven or eight moons, I think. So, so day and night would be a bit different than our world, which could explain uh, how how like the the, th- the thing between uh, between the end of Fishman Island and the start of Whole Cake, with being only three days, h- how that could work. Uh, let's see. Just to clarify on that, I was probably very wrong when I said that in that video. I think they were referring to another tea party, and then there was the Sanji wedding, which was a second tea party. Oh, it's confusing. Yes, but uh, there is, I think, definitive proof that it was more than four days between Fishman Island and Holkeck Island. Yeah, because they were on Zoe for like a week, I think, is what the reasoning was. Well, I could still talk about the moon and like having and how that would affect tides and how that makes uh, how that would explain how some islands are really weird. I mean, your question was still good because it might have explained why that day on Dressrosa was so long. <laughs> At that cage took around 30 episodes. <laughs> Yeah, the bird cage. Yeah. I will say that I'm looking at a picture of it now, and it looks like there are five moons around the One Piece world. Seriously? Yep, yep. At least five moons. Like, I can't see behind the globe. There might be more. And Anel lives on one of those now. Yeah, yeah, I'll post it in the chat. I was even... I was... I wasn't even aware of the concept of multiple moons, okay? Yeah, I hear the first time about it, too. It was during, uh... It was during Robin's flashback. Yeah, the Tree of Knowledge have a uh, scale model of the planet. It's in the chat now. Or I should say had, because it's completely burned down now. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I, belie- I believe I was looking at the manga version. The manga version definitely had more moves than that. I'll, p- I'll pull that up in a second. Yeah, if it could. Oh, actually, no, I found it now as well. The manga version has at least six, actually. I'll put that in the chat. Too. And very interestingly, one of the moons appears to have its own little moon, if you look on the right. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's why I, that's <laughs> yeah, why I remember yeah. seven. That's why I remember seven moons. Yeah, so I guess that's... I don't know what the moon of the moon is called. The mini moon. I mean, it would make sense that if the we do not know how exactly this uh, Earth spins. So um, if it were to spin in a specific matter that um, would affect exactly where the Grand Line is, would ma- uh, then it would make sense why that sea is so weird. It could also explain uh, during during Ace's during Ace's story and of how he got his Devil Fruit of like why the why that. Pacific Island had those had those like uh had those bad tides around it. Very, very possibly. So which moon do you think is the one we have visited? I haven't seen uh, that cover story. Uh, I like to think that it's the moon that the anime didn't show because they don't show the cover stories too. Yeah, so for any of you who don't know, in the uh cover stories, NL actually went to the moon and he found a race of little cyborgs on there. Damn. Wait, what? Well, that's interesting. What and apparently, and apparently, you can also travel to the moon 
by using balloons. Yes, yes, that is also what we found out. <laughs> it's very interesting because it, you know, it confirms alien life in One Piece, and that's just one moon. There are so many more. Which chapter was this? I will find it for you. That that kind of scares me, though. I hope that isn't screwed with too much. In what way? I mean that they pull a Naruto and aliens is the end uh, end game villain. <laughs> basically. Well, my it's... personal theory is that the celestial dragons probably came from one of those moons and are aliens, but that's just me. All right, there is a link in the chat to NL's Great Space Operations, which chronicles his journey on the moon. Oh, one of the moons. Oh my god, they're so tiny. <laughs> they look like little mustache choppers. <laughs> they all, yes, yes, exactly. They all, they all have a mustache. Oh my god, that's great. <laughs> I love that. Oh my god, that's... That's hilarious. Maybe Chopper is actually from outer space. Oh my god, maybe, except he's a, a reindeer. <laughs> yeah. How is he breathing? What the hell? Wait. <laughs> it's a good point. It might be because he's a Loki user. Maybe they don't need to breathe because their body is an element. Okay, I was going to say the same thing. Maybe his um, devil for power of lightning um, negates him needing actual oxygen. Oxygen, in this case, I guess. I don't know. That's it's far-fetched. I mean, no, quite possibly. It makes him, you know, invincible in every other way, so why not? Well, life would have had to exist on that planet because of all the stuff that's there. So it, I, I'm pretty... Because I don't, I doubt that the robots built themselves. Exactly, yeah, that's the thing. Someone needed to build the robots. So I'm pretty sure there is oxygen on that, on that moon. Likely. Why is it that, uh, at least I have a feeling from all the cover stories I've seen so far, of every villain, whenever Luffy kicks a villain's ass, they are still a jerk, but a little bit less of a jerk. I don't know what it is. Yeah, they're jerks, but they become much more likable jerks. I suppose. Kind of like with uh, Amy's Lobby. I'm, I'm drifting off topic here. Yeah the, yeah, the CP9 incident report cover story, where they all performed for um, uh, Rob Lucci's medical bills to raise money. Basically, yeah. In any case, very cool. I'm not sure if that was uh, quite a topic covered, but we are out of time. So thank you very much, Tess, for bringing that intriguing moon-related nonsense to us. We are going to move to Confused Potato. Please present your topic, sir. Right. I have uh, I've chosen memorable side characters. Realizing that that topic is a little too big, I just chose my two favorite ones that I'd like to talk about. Uh, first one, first one is uh, definitely a very well written character in my opinion is uh, Jin from the Barati arc, who I am so extremely sad that he didn't appear anymore. So yeah, I'd just like to throw that into the room. What do you guys think of him? I think he's freaking amazing and his fighting style. With I would I would have loved if he stayed. I agree completely. He is, in my mind, one of the biggest wastes of a character in the series. He was so strong. Like he beat Sanji. He's you know, he's something to be reckoned with and he just disappeared into nothing. Well well he beats he beat Sanji after he was already damaged by Pearl. So my assumption was, okay, they're just evenly strong, and Jin won because Sanji already was um, hit before. Maybe. I mean, yeah, we can call it that. I think he Wait, was a much up? more experienced fighter, though. Uh, Gein from the Barati Aok, the uh, subordinate of Don Krieg. With the cool uh, I'll find with the ball for you. And then they reanimated it in episode of East Blue, that fight, and it's just like a whole minute of pure awesomeness. <laughs> yeah, we found the same picture, Chloe. And yeah, that was one of my favorite uh, parts of episode of East Blue, actually. It was fantastic. Definitely. Makes me miss him even more. He would fit so well in the new world, in my opinion. He's definitely a character that you can see uh, leveling up by continuing a story. You, and, and, and it upsets me more. They decide to keep Django and that fist, that, that the guy from the Barity 2 it, keep them in the marines but not this guy <laughs> you mean full body yeah yeah full body speaking of memorable side characters django is amazing and how dare you sir slighter uh, yeah i mean compared to Jim right now like why 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 would why do they keep him who is also a good character don't get me wrong because django has more comic value he also got that special, right? <laughs> Where he dances and shit. Have you guys seen that? Django's that was, dance carnival. Yeah, absolutely. yeah it was, it's so hilarious. It's also because Buggy has the balls, and we cannot have more than one person with the balls. It's a fair oh point. I think. 
I don't know. I think um, like, it's sad. Like it's assumed he's dead because he was poisoned. I only found this out recently, though. Like I always thought, oh, okay, he survived. He just like he got better. Poison wasn't as damaging, but apparently he's dead. He Lotus. might be, yes. I mean, Loda could always pull something out of his ass and say, oh, we found an antidote somewhere, but uh, <laughs> given that he's never made an appearance anywhere ever again, like not even in a cover story, it's uh, it's not looking good. Someone ought to ask Oda or what's with that guy so we can confirm his death or something. Saddest yeah, of times. He'll just give a joke answer, though, even if you do ask. He always does. Uh, and the next character, my favorite side character of all of One Piece, sim uh, simply because he deserves much more credit, is uh, Viper. Viper is a beast. <laughs> he he literally def uh, almost defeated the uh, the villain of the arc by himself. Who does that? Like I can't think of any other side character who actually was such an influence to the arc and so on and so forth. All right, just to confirm you're talking about Wiper from Skypea, is that Indeed, correct? Indeed, yes. Uh, I heard Viper and I initially thought Cat Viper and I thought, hmm, Nekomomushi, good choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Wiper. Wiper, also very cool. He is a completely badass in every way. And if it wasn't for NL's OP Devil Fruit, he yeah. just would have ended the arc right there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and like everyone seems to ignore that. That fact, like I, I asked around my friends, oh yeah, he, he was, he was there. He, he was the usual side character, and I'm just like, dude, he basically finished, almost finished the arc off by himself. Wipe was all about the mission. He wanted to get things done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, he's like the one guy got shit done. Yeah, I think the thing about his character is that he's a very stereotypical, you know, serious, cool guy. So it's mm. hard to get really attached to him, as opposed to people like Django, who have this lovable comic nature about them. You're on about defending him now, huh? <laughs> yeah, Django is cool. He is very cool. Tess, do you have a particularly memorable side character? Uh, I want to say Hiking Bear for the meme. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I just love the way he hikes. It's, it's so... He does it with passion and vigor. With the grace of a bear. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, there are so many good side characters. Uh... None of which are in filler. I also thought hmm, maybe I can find an actually good side character that appeared in a filler, but I gave up. <laughs> that marine captain. Uh, from which uh, one? Jonathan, the one after Skypea ended. Condi Oriano. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's like, yeah. that Because that was the only good filler of all of One Piece. True, um, true. Have any of you seen Dead End Adventure, the uh, fourth One Piece movie? That, yeah, isn't that where they do this race thing? Yeah, there's a very cool original character in that, Shiraya, the uh, guy who looks really cool. He's in yellow, kind of Michael Jackson inspired. Uh, he is one of the very few like filler characters I have thought was actually cool. Can you find a guy The guy with the shovel? Yes, Shovel Man. Oh, that gives me ah. Shovel Knight flashbacks. That's really cool then if they did that. I don't remember it. I've only seen that uh, movie once, like years ago i have yet to seen any of the movies i don't know where to find them they're very difficult to find as i discovered when i tried to review them all but yeah other than that i can't exactly think of i mean other side characters that i extremely like for me oh my god how do you pronounce a wiper I, I i'm too european for this wiper yes yeah <laughs> uh and um Jin are definitely two characters that i'd love to see appearing again wiper probably will will he uh, Wiper has appeared again in a cover story and he's uh, yeah. let his hair down. Oh, damn. <laughs> he could have wiped the floor with him now. I, I honestly, if, if, if he, I would, I would not mind him uh, being stronger if he comes back. Oh, yeah, I remember that dude. Yeah, that's cool. That's just Dude cool fought design. with a shovel. That's How just cool. Really is cool. that? Yeah, uh, that really reminds me of Shovel Knight. That's amazing. And there was a moment where he like stuck it right into Gus Pardo's head. I was just like, oh, <laughs> cool. Like he he was the original Trafalgar Law. I kind of get those vibes from him. Also the kind of style. Yeah, he's like if Law and Ace had a child. <laughs> he looks like Sabo, someone points out, and I agree. Except he's so much better than Sabo. Like all Sabo has is a pipe. This guy has a shovel. <laughs> What's with the industrial tools? Pipe, shovel. True. Just kind of a hobby here. 
Huh. It's very unrefined. What happened to the good old sword and gun? Maybe it's supposed to represent the working class rebellion. This has uh, gotten too deep for me. <laughs> That's what? fine, because it is about time to move on anyway. Are you all ready for One Piece trivia? Yes. Oh, boy. Excellent. Now, Blazon, I believe you've played this before, having attended some reveries, but... I am going to give you all buzzers. Those buzzers will be your names. Can you please test your buzzers now, starting with Blazon? Blazon. Potato, test your buzzer. Potato. Tess, test your buzzer. Tess. Excellent. I'm going to ask you questions. Buzz oh, in God. if you know the answer. I don't think they're too hard, so this should be okay. Question one. What color is Chopper's nose? Test. Tess. Blue. Correct. One point for you. How many agents of CP9 infiltrated the Galilar company? Tess. Tess. Four. Is incorrect. Uh, Blazon. Five. Is also incorrect. Potato, would you like a stab at this? Oh, my, yeah, yeah. Uh, give me one second. I'll just go for um, six. Six. You're all horrendously wrong it was three no, it was three yeah, it was three. god damn it why it was oh my Califa, god Luchi, and kaku who infiltrated galila and blueno just started a bar wow okay blueno confused me there <laughs> he set the he set the bar too high for me <laughs> uh very nice you can have half a point for that on what island would you find the whale forest Wait, okay i have no idea <laughs> nope I don't think no one knows. Okay, I'll give you a clue. On what island is there a giant whale-looking thing surrounded by a forest? Blazon. Blazon. Um, I want to say Zoe. Are you going to? I'm going with Zoe. You are correct. Well done. It was Zoe. Okay. Yeah, I don't like trivia. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I, I suck at trivia too, man. Which character has the following laugh? Kishi shi 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 shi. Nobody. Uh, oh, Tess. Tess. Jekyll Moria is correct. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many laughs. Really? Oh man, I thought that was the Marine that met Robin. Okay. Oh, uh, that's uh, Soul. His is dead. Shi 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 shi. Yeah. A lot of them end up ending in shishi. Shi, shi, yeah, Luffy's too. And final question: In which arc did Luffy first perform the attack, Red Hawk? Potato. Potato. Freaking what's it called? Fishman Island. Freaking Fishman Island is correct. <laughs> and congratulations, Tess! You have won the first round of One Piece <laughs> trivia with two points. Blazon and Potato, you got a respectable one point each. Well, at least I don't go out in complete embarrassment. Not a complete I'm... embarrassment, but still. <laughs> yeah, it's know. still kind of an embarrassment. <laughs> 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 Dishonor to my family for not knowing enough One Piece trivia. So, Tess, this means that we are going to call upon you again at the end for the trivia finals. Congratulations. And with that, I'd like to thank Blazon, Potato, and Tess. Thank you so much. And let's welcome in... Hmm, who should we welcome in now? We are going to welcome in... Kiazrenin, <laughs> Chloe, and Mhoff, please make yourselves known. Hello. I'm here. I'm going to assume that was me. You assume correctly. Did I not pronounce it properly? Mm, <laughs> mm, mm. Well, speaking of, we'll begin with you. Could you please tell us a bit about yourself, Kiazrenin? Mm, well, uh, my name is very confusing. Uh, I'm not even going to bother to say it. I never do, so I don't know yes. why you <laughs> Uh, I'm 27, so you're all a bunch of kids for me sometimes. I forget 29. that. 29. 29 years. <laughs> that <fully? laughs> yeah. Well, he's big grandpa, so it's okay. Uh, and uh, I work for Microsoft. Very cool. So you're, you've got an actual career then. Well done. Uh, career, soul sucking, same thing. Yeah, exactly. And so from career to unemployed, Chloe, could you please introduce yourself? Fantastic. Hi, I'm Chloe. Uh, this is my 
third reverie, but first reverie as an actual celestial dragon. And uh, yeah, uh, as as you, as Liam said, I'm unemployed. Uh, I I stream mostly, and I play a lot of games, and I make a lot of memes. And yeah, I also am an aspiring uh, esports shoutcaster as well, which I yell at games in a hype fashion. Very good. That's pretty much all of YouTube, so you're in good company. And finally, Mhoff. Please introduce yourself, sir. Hey, I'm Matt. I'm 22, and I'm uh, not really a career person studying philosophy, looking where that goes. Oh, very cool. I didn't know you were studying philosophy. And modern Japan. Very good. Well, we will start with you, Umhoff. Will you please, please, will you please present your topic to the reverie? Yeah, well, I was thinking today that there hasn't really been much industrial use of devil fruit powers in the series and no real um, like economy. That is, I mean, there is a world government, but they don't really have like a big economy part in the, se- in the series yet. And I found that weird. So is your question, how could devil fruit powers be applied to industry? Or if there are any yet, which I've missed. Well, there definitely is one. Uh, Wapples oh, made a lot of made him. Yeah. An awful lot of money by him creating Wapa metal. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's true. That, was it on, a co- uh, on the cover stories? It was. That was Wapo's, uh omnivorous adventure, I think it was called. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Where, yeah, he, he went from having nothing on the streets to a uh, king of his own country, essentially, with all that money he made through eating things and making toys. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it was nice. It made me like Wapol a lot more. But uh, yeah, other devil fruits that could be applied to industry, my immediate thought would be Kinemon. Yeah, I would think Robin as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, Robin could start a, uh, a supply line, yeah, <laughs> or a production chain. Could be a masseuse as well, just multi- like solely <laughs> running a massage clinic. Absolutely, yes. I can imagine her being the master of a sweatshop filled with other hers filled with other problems because <laughs> yes she can make full body clones as well yeah wow. yeah she can um i'm sure that any logia could be applied to industry you know like nl could power anything essentially yeah i was thinking such things too and also uh ace or well, the fire food making engines like they did in avatar i mean it's only one of them yes but i can see a lot of uses of their fruit powers in like factories or stuff yeah and it might not be industry so much but fruits like you know mr five's bomb fruit would be very good in like the demolition field yeah Yeah, you know save money on explosives just throw a booger at it and then law should really not then miss uh, uh, then miss valentine would come down and just change her weight to like a ton and just come slamming down on the building (laughs) yeah tess has just suggested kizaru for laser eye surgery oh yeah (laughs) <laughs> Fantastic. And, and don't forget there's a uh, miss merry christmas that can you know dig tunnels like a champ absolutely yeah i think we could start up quite a competent company with this group of people is this the real purpose of the um mrs golden weeks operation <laughs> yeah. cover story and baroque works actually putting in the work yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's in their name <laughs> yes and they've wasted it just by starting a cafe instead they're in the wrong industry yeah, they could act so much higher. Uh, I was also thinking uh, Big Mom's head chef. I can never remember his name. Uh, I can never pronounce his name, but Struzen. Yeah, uh, Struzen. Most European speakers tell me I'm wrong, though. Struzen. It's Struzen. Struzen. I think you'll find it's pronounced Kiazenen. <laughs> <laughs> Kaizen will remember this. The telltale of the Discord server. <laughs> Uh, I've made so many bad choices with Kiazan. <laughs> <laughs> but now, like any, a lot of the Paramecia types as well, like honestly, any kind of superpower would be useful to have in industry. There's so much potential that it all goes to waste to either pirates or high ranking murder. All right, let me ask you, let me switch this. Is there a devil fruit that you think could not be applied to a particular industry? Is there one that's just useless well, for economic gain? <laughs> I actually, just, I actually just came up with another one for entry briefly. Uh, yeah, go for it. Kazan can start an ice skating rink. <laughs> nice, very nice. Yeah, a pop up ice skating rink, just anywhere yeah. you go. Oh, uh, and as for your second question, probably the, the um, Foxy's fruit. I don't know what that could be used for <laughs> industry wise. Uh, police work. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, slow down the culprit <laughs> okay. by 30 seconds to catch them. 
The only yeah. one I can think of is uh, uh, what's his name with the pop pop fruit that would just make him blow up. Gladius. Yeah, it, like it would be a worse version of Mr. Five's fruit. So I don't really see it being too useful. I don't know. Once again, in demolition, like that thing could do some real damage. That was yeah. well, Hancock's fruit didn't give her her beauty, right? Not Luffy she was just came up with a valid point. Chopper's fruit. Well, we don't know what would happen if a human actually ate it. So not much. Maybe it would make you look beautiful. Yeah. Start a hell. Maybe. <laughs> or maybe it would make you look hideous, like, you know, a lot of humans do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, if he can change it to different shapes of humans, I'm sure a human would just be able to turn into different shapes of himself. Actually, there we go. I think Potato has it. Alveda's fruit. Yeah. How do you apply that to industry? How do you apply that to industry? How do you apply that to industry? Rescue. It, if you if the people get trapped in like the caves and stuff, you could slip into the cave real easily and you know bring them supplies. How do you get out? You slip back out. <laughs> I you can't mean, slip you, upwards, stupid. Not no. I'm like saying like there's a cave in and a cave forward, not like climbing back up. All right, so it only applies to one very specific cave in scenario. Yes. <laughs> slip in, slip out. <laughs> it's great at parties. Oh, yeah, and yeah, also yeah. Bo Boa that's Hancock. That's actually fair. Wouldn't... That's actually fair, Tess. What was that about Boa Hancock? Her fruit wouldn't really have much uh, use in, in the street either, hopefully. I don't know. I think her fruit would gather a lot of very diligent workers. Many, many diligent perverts, yes. Yes, many diligent perverts. She'll just keep looking up. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Looks so down on you that she's looking up, yes. Yeah, exactly. It's my Favorite quirk in the entire series, by the way. It is. It is quite great. <laughs> um, the axolotl fruit. Tell me how the axolotl fruit can be useful in industry. So, you have some axolotls in captivity that are feeling sad, and you need to know why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's perfect. Good. You've done it again, Kiazaman. Eventually, you're just gonna call me Kinny Kinnimon, so I'm just waiting for that. Ooh, Kinnimon. That's a good idea. I wish I'd thought of it. I mean, I just got the scary thought of if someone got a panda fruit and, like, pandas have trouble breeding in captivity. Ugh. <laughs> see, um, semen donator? Actually, what about Bellamy? Uh, circus show. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, but that really applies to everyone. That is true. He'd be a great MMA fighter. I also quite like the idea of Bartholomew Kuma's travel service. Yeah. Definitely. Where would you like to go? Boop! Would be... Would be cheaper than f flying it as well. How planes. do you get back? You don't. It's one way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you could set up the best scam in the world with that. Just send them to like a prison island. Well, that now exists in One Piece because World Seeker. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking that too. Jail Island. Oh, doesn't that sound like a fun open world <laughs> game, guys? Fantastic. <laughs> that's getting that's getting a little close to my top. So let's see. Well, that that's <laughs> no, no, no. That's a very convenient transition because we oh, just ran fantastic. out of time for that topic. So, Chloe, <laughs> would you like to present your ramblings to the reverie? All right. So, my topic is basically now that, yeah, as we've seen in Liam's video, it it isn't going to be a hugely successful game, World Seeker. So, my question is, uh, if you were to create a One Piece game, what? How would you go about it? Like, what sort of genre would it be? Part of the canon universe or an original story within an original world? That sort of thing. Like, what? Yeah, what genre? What type of game? All that sort of things. Just basically the main uh, aspects of a game, essential of the game, essentially. An excellent question. We will start with Kiamanen. So simple enough. You make it an original story. You throw it in the in the Kingdom Hearts universe and confuse. Ev. So One Piece crossover with Disney? Oh yeah, yeah. It's already okay. crossed over with like Toriko and Dragon Ball Z. So let it let it be a big broken worlds. Have to go to all the worlds and fix them with One Piece characters. I'm fine with this. So just Luffy having a harem of uh, princesses after him, more princesses after him. And it's that's already canon. We're good to go. Understandable. <laughs> That's interesting. I don't know. Yeah, I I have to agree with Tactical and Droid here because I think both Assassin's Creed Black Flag but One Piece would be like really good. Just cut out the bad stuff about Black Flag and just have was, it like yeah, well, that. I was going to say Black Flag is a better One Piece game than any One Piece game. 
Yeah, exa- exactly. <laughs> and then, yeah, because that'd be amazing. And you just have, you'd be able to have crew singing Bink's sake in a game because of the sea shanties and Black Flag. They would just be singing One Piece openings. Yeah, exactly. One Piece openings, Bink's sake, all that sort of stuff. We'll even throw in the, um, the we'll, make, we'll contact the devs, put the music Yonko War songs in there. So we'll be good to go. <laughs> we'll have oh, once a crab, always a crab. <laughs> Um, you'll, you'll do that and they'll just make it rainbow star and never anything else yeah yeah <laughs> um as for droids point a fighter would be good basically as if arc systems work on it and we, we've seen some competent fighters in terms of one yeah. of these games but uh a really comprehensive one would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I still think the current best One Piece game is probably Pirate Warriors 3, but that's just my personal opinion. Yeah, that's the general consensus, all burning blood. All right, what do you reckon about this? A One Piece first-person shooter where you play as a random Marine <sighs> and go on Call of Duty-style missions around the Grand Line. Oh my god, that would actually be fun. Game of the year. <laughs> Grand Line Review, you've done it again. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, uh, it, it, would, it would feel impossible because you would just see these rubber men and super-powered freaks all around you and your guy would just start freaking out. All right. How, how, I'll pose this as well. Uh, a, I think Liam will like this. Uh, a One Piece uh, Dungan Romper crossover. <laughs> Absolutely. Like a killing game <laughs> with characters from yeah. One Piece. It's fantastic. Uh, who, would, who would be Monokuma? Uh, uh, Kuma would be Monokuma. <laughs> it's Bartholomew Kuma. Yeah. Yeah, probably one of those robots from NL's Adventure, really. They're very oh, yeah, Monokuma like, sure. actually. Yeah. So we've probably just killed so, the chat because no one else tends to like Dangan Robber except for the two of us. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> but I would be 100% down with that. Anything Dangan no, Robber is guaranteed successful, <laughs> except for Ultra Despair Girls. Oh, yeah. But, so it just. So what you're saying is ding and rope and burning blood. Gotcha. Yep. Deliver yep. it to my desk by Monday, please. If you can, can say my that. name right, I'll consider it. Uh, this That's a difficult happen, challenge. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that crossover is coming. But yeah, I, I feel like all these are like excellent ideas that I feel like if just done right, a one piece can again be good can be good. Like that's that's what it comes down to in the end. I mean they're uh, what was the one on the DS? Big Red World, I think is what it was. Unlimited World Red? Yes, Unlimited World Red. That was a, a cool game with an interesting concept. Yeah, I actually quite enjoyed that game. I was surprised by that. And the vampire fruit it had was actually very cool. Yeah, we may have differing opinions on that, but it was a cool game in general. Cool concept, but we'll go with that. Very cool concept. Mr. Matt, the not not Luffy Matt, but Mhoff Matt, what do you reckon? What would be your ideal One Piece game? I think I would like something. I had a Naruto game once where you were based in the city and you went out for missions and something like that, but that, based on the ship with is some that maybe ultimate uh, ninja storm. I have no idea. It's been ages and I sold it. Okay, I think it's uh, the Ninja Storm series where you do that. Yeah, it's very likely. There's a game for you coming out. It's called Unlimited World. <laughs> Yeah, I, so you, I, I had high hopes for it, but it really doesn't look like anything yet. I, I don't give it up yet, though. I think it still might be all right. We've only seen this. Yeah, but we've we've seen the whole general concept of it, and we pretty much know the story of it. And I mean, the fight with yeah. Akainu was definitely uh, let's very not boring. Talk about that. <laughs> yeah, but, but something something open world like that is. I think my would be my ideal uh, One Piece game. I agree. If you if I could just explore the entirety of the One Piece world with like my own custom character, encounter things like devil fruits and gradually like level up hockey and stuff like that, that would be amazing. That gives me an idea of a One Piece MMO. Yeah, like World of Warcraft, but for One Piece. Yeah, exactly. Better than WoW. I would play that. Yeah. Or even like almost a Fire Emblem esque. Which is more freedom. Skyrim in the One Piece universe, yeah. Droid summed it up. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, just not first person. Yeah. Wind Waker. Man, yeah, first person. Wind Waker. Oh, yeah, for sure. Essentially, yeah, essentially Wind Waker, MMO, RPG, yeah, all that sort of stuff. 
and we're good to go. And Todd Howard's uh, directing it, <laughs> and it's just Skyrim again. Matt Mercer is the voice of Luffy. Yes, and please have the entire world plus all the lines that weren't uh, covered in the Grand Line story. Mm. Yeah, Able so we're to... not very demanding at all. No. no not at all. We just we demand to... perfection. <laughs> exactly, and we need uh, G8 in the game, and we'll be good. How about the entire game is G8? And it's instead, it's like a, uh, oh my god, what's it called? It's Metal like a Gear horror game, game where you're stuck inside game, yeah. G8. Yeah, it's like Outlast, but in G8. Oh my god, that'd be terrifying. And also extremely good. Con- Condoriano is the antagonist. Yeah, and he just chases you very slowly through various different hallways. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, well anyway, I think we've come to the natural conclusion of that. Indeed, that... That Danganronpa X One Piece is... That's still the one I'm most excited about, (laughs) yes. But we will now move to Kiazaba. What is your topic, sir? Stop trying at this point. I mean, there's nothing I can really call you that's better than Kiazaba. So my topic, I didn't write it down, but I told you about it earlier, is now that you've gone through all of what's here for one piece again recently are there some of your top five lists you would like to go back and change around yes there probably are um i told you i'd prepare for this i didn't do that so i'm just going to quickly bring up my playlist of top five videos because there are definitely some that i would be a bit oh i was wrong there i mean first and foremost the top five best in works arcs i would change and i did by ranking them all one by one uh the devil fruits Definitely, I would change those as well. There are some in the top five worst Devil Fruits that I definitely don't think should be there upon closer inspection. Uh, I did a video, um, top five heartbreaking moments. Uh, Some of those could probably be replaced. because There's been a lot of them in One Piece, but uh, I regret not putting uh, Binksake in the uh, top five best birds. That's not going to change. What do you mean? You're meant to make one where it's just South Bird five times. Uh, It's... North bird, then east bird, then west bird, yeah. then <laughs> south bird, then big south bird on Skype here. <laughs> big, big news south bird. Yeah. That's yeah. it. That's all it is. He's a big boy. Big south bird. Big south bird. Mm. One thing I regret is my top five final villains video. That came out, I think, a month before the whole Eam thing happened. And so I just keep getting nonstop comments about Eam on that particular video. Um, and yeah, for the most part, I don't think I'd change a hell of a lot about many others. That, that's fair. I, I was just wondering, since, you know, it, it's a whole lot different, like, oh yeah, I remember this, I remember this, and then I just watched all of it, where I didn't know if there were some things that you had, like, double-checked on. What was happening in One Piece when you started the channel? When I started the channel, and in its initial incarnation, the chapter was Germa Kingdom, which is very early on in Whole Cake Island, and it was, I think, a chapter that took place mostly in the Seducing Woods. It was when Brulee was introduced. And then, eventually, I took a big break because my initial way of doing things wasn't working. And when I started it up again proper, I think the first chapter was Go Caesar, which was um, them escaping from Whole Cake Chateau. Okay, so... That much has already happened since you started the channel that you were going to change this many lists. I mean, especially the arc lists. It's only been two. Surprisingly, yes. Uh, It's all as a result of doing the arc review series and going back and reading and sometimes watching things over again and realizing, oh, I was wrong about that. And you will do this many more times. I mean, yeah, I expect that things will change in the future as well. Top five lists are bound to change when things are still coming out for it. Yeah, exactly. And One Piece 101s, they obviously change as well. And yeah, I don't think there's anything on this channel that's permanent, which is just the result of an ongoing series. Except for saying my name wrong. Top five Grand Line Review mispronunciations of Kiazanin. Don't tempt me. I do do have a buster call. (laughs) (laughs) You do as well. Yeah, not Luffy still wonders who Gangster Gastino was. Does anyone have any theories? Smoker, I guess. It was probably Smoker, wasn't it? Because there's like gas in yeah. his name and it's Smoker all, is, you know, always. a gas type Logia. Yeah. It's always Smoker in that. Yeah. Are you insinuating that Soga King is also Smoker? Yeah. 
Exactly. Oh god, dropping the big stuff right now, are time, we? Time to make a 30 minute video on why that is the case. I've thought about doing things like that before, like making videos on just purely crack theories, but I don't think most people understand what a sense of humor is on the internet, and I think I just get an awful lot of hate for it. Especially on YouTube. What, you just think we don't know what funny is? I'm offended. As you should be. It's particularly you I'm thinking of. No, it's uh, it's my viewers who come from primarily, you know, non-English speaking backgrounds. Wait before the game comes out, bro. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of comments like that, which are mostly in good fun. But a few that were like really serious. There's a surprising amount of defenders for this game. They want it to be good. And that's basically their only bias towards they're in, it. Is... They're in the five stages of grief or whatever. They're in denial right now. Denial. Yeah, they're in the first stage, yeah. And when they write the comments, they go to anger and then back to denial. <laughs> it's the two stages of a YouTube commenter. <laughs> <laughs> World Seeker, 11 out of 10 stars. Ah. Yeah, I have I think I'm in the acceptance phase of that, even though it's not out yet. I haven't reached that yet. Denial I'm all so the way. sorry to hear that. But maybe I can improve your mood with some One Piece trivia. Yeah? Uh. All right, so you guys are all veterans at One Piece trivia. Kiazen, can you please test your buzzer? No. Beautiful. Chloe, please test your buzzer. Chloe. Excellent. And Matt, could you please test your buzzer? Matt. Brilliant. Then we're all ready. Question one. Which pirate crew contains a member named Rockstar? Chloe. Chloe. Uh, red hair pirates. The red hair pirates is correct. Which of these islands is not a location in Totland? Cheese Island, Flavor Island, or Custard Island? Biggins. Matt. Biggins. Flavorland? Is not what I said and is also incorrect. Chloe. Chloe. Actually, no, we'll uh, go to uh, I, okay. this, we'll go to Matt because he was next in. It's a wild guess because I don't know what she's island. Uh, is incorrect. So, Chloe, it's looking pretty good for you to guess this. <laughs> what were the other two? <laughs> Cheese Island, Flavor Island, or Custard Island? Uh, Custard Island. Is correct. How did you ever get oh. it? <laughs> Scratchman Apu is a member of which unique tribe of humans? Biggins. Biggins, I believe you were first. I believe it is the long arm tribe. And you would believe correctly. One point to you. That's what I was going to guess, sir. Which character has the following laugh? Sure, do, 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 Chloe. Uh, Chloe. Uh, it's not Kuzan, is it? It is not Kuzan. Biggins. Biggins. It would be Caesar. It is Caesar Clown. This is exciting. It's all tied up. Biggins on two points. Chloe on two points. One final question that uh, Matt could come in and uh, ruin you both with. <laughs> I won't. In return for freeing Kokoyashi Village, how much money did Arlong demand from Nami? Chloe. Chloe. Was it initially uh, 100 million uh, berries? Is 100% correct. Yes. Ah, Very so well close. Done. Chloe, you will be joining Tess in the trivia finals. Woo! I finally I finally did something well. <laughs> and Karu's not here, so So yes, your chances are looking pretty good. And with yeah. that, we are going to thank Chloe German Matt and Biggins D. Kiazaman. Thank you very much for attending this reverie. And we will welcome in Not Luffy, Code Red, and the Rad Man. Hello. Say hi, guys. Hello. Excellent. So, Code Red, tell us a bit about yourself, sir. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I am. Uh, I'm, this is my first reverie. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited for it. Um, not so excited for the trivia because I know I'm going to fail. Uh, and uh, yeah, because I'm horrible at trivia. But uh, I'm here. And uh, to talk about some One Piece. So let's go. That's right. The trivia is a long way away. So you've got plenty of time to mentally prepare yourself. All right. The Radman, please introduce yourself, sir. I'm Wyatt. So far, I've been in, I think, all the reveries so far. I think you have as well. Yeah. 
and I'm from Utah. And I think that's all the interesting things I can think of. Utah, lots of Mormons. Very true. And not Luffy. You've got your microphone muted. Introduce yourself. Oh, I am not Luffy, and I am going to be king of the pirates. That's about if it. You're not Wait Luffy. You can't, if you're not Luffy, you can't be king of the pirates. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm Lucy. Sorry. Very good. Contestant Lucy, welcome to the reverie. Thank you. Thank you. This is my first reverie. <laughs> and actually, Tactical Groot, would you like to join this chat? Because I think you would be the odd one out. Please step into the voice chat. Um, I think he actually said something about how he's being forced to play a game of Twister? I really appreciate you coming. What was that? I really appreciate you coming. Okay, maybe step out of the voice chat. <laughs> hey, give me one second. That game of Twister sounds intense. <laughs> it does. Okay, I'm back. I played my game. <laughs> Fantastic. Did you win? <laughs> yes. Good. Oh, very well done. I kinda I kinda forced out the person to fall, so yay. Ah, oh, good. Sabotage. Brilliant. You'd make a great pirate. Tell us a bit about yourself, tactical Groot. Um, I'm Canadian. I'm eighteen. I'm in university. And yeah, my last name actually has Groot in it, so that's why I called Groot. At the risk of getting you doxxed, what is your last name? That sounds cool. Groot Titan. Oh, wow. Very cool. And very fortunate that it really can't be spelled unless you give them the actual spelling. Yes, definitely. <laughs> in any case, welcome to the Reverie, Tactical Groot. Uh, would you like to present your topic to these wonderful people? Uh, my topic, which I thought of like last minute because I couldn't think of anything was out of all the current characters who is the most likely to join the One Piece pirate I mean the Straw Hat pirates the One Piece pirates it's quite a crew there <laughs> uh, so yeah out of everyone we've seen so far who would be most likely to join the Straw Hats and let's be fun and not say Vivi or Jinbei I don't think Jinbei is ever going to join it technically isn't way, Jinbei isn't technically Jimbei already a crew member? Like, he hasn't been with the crew, but, like, he has come out and said, yes, I will join you. Just give me a, just give me a minute. Is basically, he, like... He did, and Luffy has called himself Jimbei's captain. But, you know, they haven't had that moment, you know, when every straw hat joins and they all do a cheers on the ship. He hasn't done that, so he's not official yet. He hasn't been inducted. Alas, that is not the question. Who, Code Red, of the current characters that have been introduced in the series, would you think has the best chance of joining the Straw Hats? Now, um, since the question is the best chance of joining, I am going to go with a character that I'm going to be bringing that um, I don't think is actually going to want to join, but he would have the most likelihood of joining if he were to want to. Um, and that would be Kobe. Um, obviously he won't ever want to join, um, since he's a Marine, but I think he has the best chance of joining, if that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Well, I wasn't uh, expecting that. Explain yourself. Um, yeah. Uh, so the reason I'm saying that is because, well, it's, that was the first friend Luffy ever made when he left his homeland. Um, I mean, and those two kind of have a pretty pretty solid connection because of that. Um, also, there's the whole fact that in the uh, uh, Paramount War, Kobe was present during the war, um, and uh, he had that pretty epic moment there, I think, with uh, where he kind of tried to stop all the bloodshed from happening. So, yeah, just the fact that Luffy and Kobe have that kind of connection with each other, um, and the fact that I think he would get along well with the crew, um, yeah, that, that would be what, what I would say. Again, not necessarily a character I think would actually join, but one that I think would be the most likely. I can see that happening, especially with Mr. Pure Justice. Yeah, definitely. Like, maybe he does betray the Marines when they show how completely corrupt they are. Something along those lines. Um, I still feel like there's a more obvious answer, and I'm going to throw it to not Luffy, a.k.a. Lucy, to, you know, give us that answer. I don't know. The obvious answer I was going to say would be Carrot or Law. But for some reason, I've always wanted Cammy to join the crew because I think it'd be cool if they had a mermaid that could talk to fishes. 
that just like swam along the side of the ship. Interesting. I was convinced that you were going to say Bon Clay, which is why I passed it over to you like that. I wish it was Bon Clay. I I wish it was Bon Bon Clay is a good one, but but for a while I wanted it to be Pedro, but you know things happened. Things did happen indeed. Um, it's an interesting discussion, Carrot. She is being hinted fairly heavily, I would say, as potentially a new straw hat, which I have mixed feelings about. But if the question is who is most likely to join, I would probably land on her as well. Yeah, I would like to see Law join, but there is no reason for him to join, really. They have a doctor and everything else. So aside from him being cool, I don't see why he would actually join. Have you read the latest chapter by any chance? No, nah, I'm three behind so far, or right now. All right, it's not really a spoiler, but there's this beautiful panel of law being absolutely disgusted at Luffy just by the fact that he's a benevolent pirate. That's awesome. I love the no, whole law and Luffy <laughs> dynamic. Yes, law is the cat to Luffy's dog. If anything, law might join the Grand Fleet. Yeah, definitely. I should hope so. I don't know, maybe law will betray Luffy in the future. Yeah, um, uh, the, I will admit the reason I didn't say Carrot was because I've just assumed that she was basically a shoe in Strong assumption there. It is a strong assumption, but like, I, and especially considering the fact that, um, like, something people haven't realized yet, I don't think have realized and, like, mentioned upon, is that Luffy himself has specifically stated in, like, the first few chapters or something of the whole series that he only wants 10 crew members. Yeah, people have mentioned that over and over and over again. The question is, is it 10 crew members including him or not including him? Yeah, that's that's the big question. And I've always assumed that it's including him because he is technically a member of his crew. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. Um, I'm going to throw that big question to the Radman. Answer all of life's questions for us, please. I don't know if I can do that, but as far as who i think would join the crew i don't know i'm gonna go out on a limb and i i think it would be interesting to see uh bellamy join just because he would go all the way from being a villain in whatever arc that was to you know kind of but not really an ally in dress rosa and then a crew member by you know sometime after wano I really like that answer as well. If Bellamy went from, you know, that ultimate villain being one shot in the face to, you know, full-fledged beloved crew member, that would be kind of the perfect evolution of a character. Yeah, that would that's, be. That's, that's kind of why I picked him over, like, you know, Carrot or anyone else, because it's like he's already, you know, midway through this villain to ally transformation arc. And we saw him making a flag, so what if that's the way he joins is presenting them this, you know, unrippable straw hat uh, flag? Yeah, maybe. I definitely think he's making a Jolly Roger for the Grand Fleet, but it seems as if he has retired from piracy, unfortunately. Are we allowed to talk about manga spoilers for Whole Cake Island? Um, please don't. Um, just to let you know... Just to let you know where I am right now, because I only read the English translated mangas in their volumes um and the most recent chapter ended on luffy looking at katakuri in the mirror world about to face off with him okay oh, I, was wow. just I think even the anime is beyond that yeah it is yeah, the anime keeps beyond. recommending me anime news yeah i was just gonna ask because there's someone from whole cake island i think might join the pirates of the Straw uh, hat. Could you could you say it cryptically in a way that we'd understand, but Code Red wouldn't? Um, probably not. I'm not that good at being cryptic. No. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, how about you DM me the name of the character, and I'll see what I can do. Oh, okay. Also, if it's the name of a character that I already know about, I, I'm perfectly fine with you mentioning him. Obviously. So yeah, just just to throw that out there too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Hmm. That actually might be considered a bit of a spoiler. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, I know something that can't spoil it because people don't know about this yet. Fish melt you, you, guy. You don't. You don't. You don't have to. You know, say people. I, I, it's very clear. It's me. I understand. Well, also people in the chat too, maybe. Yeah, maybe it's always good to be courteous about spoilers, just in case, because we're all, usually we're all at different points in the series. Um, to answer your question, 
not question, your suggestion, uh, tactical, that nobody else knows about. <laughs> I would love that. I think that would be amazing, but I doubt it because I don't think he brings something unique enough to the crew, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yes, excellent. But with that, we are going to conclude that. Thank you very much, Tactical, for that intriguing discussion. And we are going to move to Code. Mr. Code, present your topic. So uh, for the present presentation of my topic, uh, I've got the theories on what the final boss of the whole series is going to be, who that's going to be. I've got like five that are really solid in my mind that could potentially be it in good old GLR fashion in that top five, those top five picks, you know? Um, All right, I'm going to get you to go through those top five, but I just want you to know that where you are in the series is very awkward to talk about this. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, but, but proceed uh, anyway. So uh, just, just to let you know, since where I'm at in the series, um, it, since it is awkward, um, just a note that we can just keep it to these five too, which would be also perfectly fine. But yeah, uh, so ob the obvious answers are Blackbeard and Akainu. Um, those two are obvious choices. Um, and then some other ones that, the three that I have that are sort of out of left field um, are Kobe, Red-Haired Shanks, and then Monkey D. Dragon. And something that I've considered might be a possibility, which I think would be pretty neat, is that the final boss battle is like a three-way battle between Akainu, a, a Monkey D. Dragon, and Monkey D. Luffy. Kind of hitting that trifecta there of the three major powers in the world right now, which is the world government, pirates, and then the Revolutionary Army. Sounds rather chaotic in true One Piece style. I'm going to get to you a little bit on Dragon, but first I just want to touch on Kobe. I fully support him. Maybe not being the final boss, but like the final fight of One Piece. If the the very last fight in the series was Luffy versus Kobe, just to like round out that rivalry, I think would be very cool. What would be your reasoning for Luffy getting into a fight with his father? Mostly because, like I mentioned in that fight in in, in my th trifecta boss battle, that's he doesn't really know much about his father to begin with, and I feel like perhaps their ideals just won't mesh very well um the revolutionary army of course and pirates don't necessarily get along too great otherwise it wouldn't be a revolutionary army they'd just be pirates um i mean yeah. maybe the revolutionary army are kind of like pirates but they have a a more specific purpose they're built to take down a system rather than just fuck about an adventure yeah, um, and I guess that would be, like, I guess that would be the thing. Like, maybe, while while Dragon has shown to be proud of his son in certain s situations, I could see him being, turning into a more uh, fatherly figure of of sorts, in that, like, he'd... He'd be like, look, son, you're fucking around too much. You need to get serious. And then Luffy's like, I don't want to be serious, though. And so then it ends up turning into a fight. I could see that maybe happening. <laughs> I think that's exactly what's going to happen word for word. <laughs> but, uh, let's go ahead and get someone else's opinion on this. Not Luffy. Who do you think will be the final boss of One Piece? I'm going to go with the obvious choice first and say Blackbeard. And... I'm going to go out of left field here and say maybe not last boss, but I think one of the last few might be Smoker, considering he's had a rivalry with Luffy this whole entire series so far. That's fair. I'd like to see him, you know, get on Luffy's level again. Like, I mean, at this point right now, I feel like he's not even a threat to Luffy, but when he first met Luffy, he did almost make it? killed him. Welcome, you did. I blasphemous HD. It I can hear myself in your microphone. I apologize for that. Let that me, is uh, all let, good. Let me, fix that. let me fix that really quickly. Please proceed, Matt. My answer is Blackbeard and maybe Smoker somewhere towards the end. Like, I mean, I feel like Smoker's been struggling with his ideals in the military for a while, so I feel like it'd be his final, like, you know, doing his job, and then if Luffy beats him, then that's it. He gives up. He's like, Luffy's right. 
Once again, I think that'll happen exactly word for word. Yep, Smoke would just say, fuck it, Luffy's right. I have never heard a more terrifying, terrifying thing than Luffy is right. Yeah, it is a scary <laughs> thought, isn't it? I don't generally consider Smoke a final boss material, but, you know, it would still be kind of cool because he is, you know, the, the gap to Luffy's Roger. Yeah, man, he's, like, pursued him all the way to the New World. Like, I feel like that was the majority of the reason for him going to the New World. It was, yeah. It was definitely the reason why he went into the Grand Line to begin with as well. Like, Smoker has a, a huge hate boner for Luffy. Yeah, and like I said, the first time they met, he whoop he almost killed Luffy if it wasn't for Dragon. And at this point in time, I feel like Luffy has gone past Smoker, so I'd like to see Smoker catch up again, or, like, maybe... It, Maybe Punk Hazard was a wake-up call for him again. Yeah, after he got beaten four times. Whew. Oh, yeah, he did. I, I have always thought that Smoker was kind of has kind of been underused in the series. Like, just personally. Like, I he every time he's shown up, he's, like, either shown up very briefly or he's shown up and gotten his ass kicked. And it's never really been by Luffy and, like, I just felt like he'd been underused. That's very true. And he showed up to Alabasta, got his ass kicked, and then left before the final conflict started. Yeah. Uh, but the Rad Man, please enlighten me on who the final boss of One Piece is. So I think the final boss of One Piece, just to make it, uh, I don't know, I think it would be interesting um, to see, you know, a Luffy versus Blackbeard fight. Uh, but I also think it would be hilarious just to see, like, Luffy get strong enough to one-shot a Kainu. Maybe through the stomach, would you say? Yes, that would be very appropriate. Highly. But yeah, so actual final boss, I think it would probably either be Blackbeard or if Shanks survives to that point, like, maybe Shanks is like, you know, before I let you do this, you have to beat me. But, yeah, maybe. Which is kind of what I was thinking when I had him as an option. It, it kind of makes sense. Although, uh, the one that makes more sense, I would think... I mean, Blackbeard obviously makes the most sense. Although, I kind of also makes sense. It's, it's, it's like a toss-up between those two. So, I could also see it being like a three-way battle at the end between Blackbeard, Akainu, and Luffy. So, like, yeah. I'm, I'm really hanging on to this three-way battle at the end, though. Because, like, I just think that would be super awesome. And you might be right about that, but uh, you may not be correct about who's in that battle. Let me just say, there is a very obvious choice that we're all not saying, because it is a huge spoiler to you, but uh, yeah, you let me know when you find out. You'll know what we're talking about. Yeah, I basically think it's going to be spoiler guy, but I don't want to spoil it, so that's why I'm not saying it. Spoiler guy. Okay will be his name for the rest of the reverie. Spoiler guy is a great way of referring to him. Is this the same spoiler guy that was brought up in the one most likely to join the crew? No. Definitely not. not. Definitely not. <laughs> I wish. That would be the biggest twist ever if he did. Can you just imagine Luffy encountering him for the first time? Spoiler guy, join my crew. <laughs> I would laugh <laughs> so hard at that. Well, just think of this. He has that item. He could be just a giant fanboy. Ah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, uh, there, there was that one guy who I was like, for sure thinking would be like a fighter. And then he ended up joining the Grand Fleet and was like this huge One Piece fanboy. And I was like, what? This is out of left field. Yeah, trust me, you've got a lot of left fieldness to come. Uh, but with that, I think we need to move on because we've gone a bit over time here. So we are going to go to the Rad Man. Present your topic, sir. Okay. So I actually got three ready just in case we were going to have spoiler issues. So depending on how spoilery we think it would be, it'll be either who will, you know, fight Jack, since I don't think that's too spoilery that someone's going to have to take out Jack at some point. How will Kaido be defeated, and will Zoro actually get a challenge in Wano? So we can really pick whichever one we think will be the least spoilery. Hmm, all very Wano-focused. Wano isn't, you know, there's not a lot to spoil about it at the moment, except for the very latest chapter. So I'd say go for it. I, I, I find the Kaido question most interesting, personally. But uh, Alright, then answer it. Um, yeah, so uh, Kaido, he's, his whole shtick is that he's, like, indestructible, right? 
And so the real question is, the, the real question is, how do you defeat the indestructible man? And the answer to that question is you suffocate him. You literally put him in a room without oxygen, and therefore he can't breathe, which means he dies, because he can't breathe. Or you have a certain gas man take the oxygen out of from by his mouth and nose. Precisely. Do you really think he hasn't already tried that, though? I mean, how, how would he try that? His hobby is suicide. He tries everything. Yes, but like, how would you go about trying that though? That's the thing. And if he and and to since his whole stick is trying to commit suicide, he would try every way that was possible for him. And he's obviously going to end up dying because that's like this been the whole build up for this whole thing with the Luffy Law, like alliance. So like, I mean, that or he finds a new lease on life. Yeah. Um. So, like, he, they, they've got to be able to find a way to try and kill him in a way that hasn't been done before. Or just trap him underwater forever. I mean, that would be the easiest way to kill him, but I don't think he ha- I, I don't think he- I don't think he has a devil fruit, would be my really? thing. Yeah, I, I really don't think he has a devil fruit. He's just this huge-ass dude with incredible powers all on his own. Which kind of surprised me as to why you didn't put Kaido's abilities into your re- most recent video, top five video. It's because I don't want it to become not current, because I think that'll be explained eventually soon. You know, during this arc, that will more than likely be explained. And I don't want people bitching That's at fair. me. That's fair. I tend to think that Kaido... I think that one way is if Law can use his room ability to like cut him in half or something and they can just keep his pieces from getting back together. Like separating him to the far ends of the earth. Yeah, but that seems, that seems too simple. That seems too simple an answer. <laughs> and suffocation doesn't? <laughs> well, suffocation is like... That, that would take... I, I feel like that would take effort, but maybe... Maybe you're, you've got a point. And so would keeping him from killing you before Law could make a room. The interesting thing I want to just flag is that you seem to think that Kaido is some sort of human, don't you? By the way you're speaking. That was directed at you, Code Red. Oh, um, I mean, no. I think he could definitely be, you know, either like a giant or some other form of being. I mean... Oh, that's what I mean. Like, you think he's a humanoid being? To an extent... From the pictures that we've seen of him, he seems to be somewhat humanoid. Yeah. One of the really interesting things I find about Kaido is that no one ever really refers to him as a person. Kaido is the strongest creature in the world. So it makes me think that he was some sort of creature that ate a devil fruit, you know, a la Chopper, like the Ogre Ogre no Mi or something, and became what he is. Yeah, that's, that is that is one of the other things that I was thinking was a possibility, because... Chopper, chop, or chopper, chopper does have that ability to turn into this giant, just beast thing with his fruit, right? So I feel like that at some point he might have eaten a fruit, Alakin Chopper's fruit, that just he ended up getting into that that beast form and was unable to get out of that beast form. He overdosed on smile fruits. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Why hasn't Kaido tried eating two devil fruits? Well, maybe he has. That's true. Like, we haven't seen someone other than Blackbeard who's taken the powers of multiple fruits. Maybe Kaido is what happens when you eat multiple fruits? An eternal pain. Yeah, because they actually haven't said exactly what happens when you eat two fruits, right? It would also David. explain why he wants to commit suicide. It has been said, it's never been seen or confirmed by anyone, but it's been said that if you consume two fruits, then your body just rejects it and essentially kills you. Oh, maybe that's how we kill him. Yes, we feed him to death. (laughs) (laughs) But my response to that is at the same time, yes, why hasn't he tried that already? Because he has the resources to find two devil fruits that he could just eat himself. Precisely. Which also makes me think that the theory that he has multiple fruits is also quite possible. So Kaido is Blackbeard. Wait a second. What if he has eaten a devil fruit that just makes him immortal? Maybe. Or maybe he had the immortality operation performed on him. Or maybe he was... Here's one of my favorite crack theories. Kaido is a poneglyph that was fed a devil fruit by Dr. Vegapunk. Yeah, I've Interesting. Interesting. I put no stock in that theory whatsoever. 
I just enjoy it greatly. <laughs> I actually put a lot of stock in the uh, the immor- immortality thing. Like somebody used Law's fruit years, years before he did to make Kaido, uh, you know, live forever. And now it's come back to bite him in the ass. You know, the immortality thing, it, it could be that, you know, he had, he's, he was young and full of life and wanting to live so much so that he just wanted to be immortal and so they had that operation done to him he then became immortal and it's been centuries later and he's realized his the errors in his ways but something about that operation just makes it so that he can't die <laughs> shunks was that a sigh from here what what happened oh Nothing. shit, shit. Oh, no, really, I'm, I'm just enjoying on some good old almond marvelous <laughs> All right, so that was an awkward end to things. Matt, have we done your topic yet? I can't remember. No, not yet. Oh, then this is perfect. Could you please present your topic, sir? All right, well, being a big fan of uh, old Dragon Ball, I like to watch power escalation in anime, and I was wondering how you guys felt about how it was handled in One Piece, because the way I see it, I think it was handled pretty well. I mean, we were introduced to, like, some of the top-tier people really early, like Shanks and uh, Mihawk. And then we got back out into the new world and realized that, you know, it's just... I like the whole way the power escalation worked in One Piece, and I was wondering how everybody else felt about it. The power escalation is definitely something that appeals to me and makes me want to read and watch... Well, read... Uh, One Piece, uh, a lot of the other power escalations oftentimes just exceedingly so power up their characters to a point that it's not really even understandable anymore. It's just, oh, well, he's facing off against this bad guy. He's going to win. End of story. The One Piece power scaling, on the other hand, is relatable uh, to an extent. And it also allows for Luffy to lose battles, which I think is also important in order to keep your audience... I agree. And I like the fact that they introduced Mihawk early off in the series, like, because he's pretty much set the bar for swordsmen. Like, we still have not seen another swordsman competent enough to beat him. And we have Zoro, who, if it wasn't for Mihawk, I would say, hands down, Zoro is the strongest swordsman in the One Piece universe. So the thing that really sells the power scaling to me is that I feel like in any other series, that moment with Mihawk would have very soon after led to having to overcome Mihawk. So I go back to the whole Bleach situation where uh, Byakuya was introduced. He beat Ichigo in, you know, a single hit. And then in the very next arc, Ichigo overcame him. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. In most series, you introduce a villain like, say, Frieza. And then you have to defeat them in that arc rather than just letting them lurk in the background for a bit, which is what really fucks over Dragon Ball in the long run. But uh, no, One Piece is is fairly well planned. I will say there are a couple of problems. Like in retrospect, I'm not sure that Luffy should have been able to defeat Crocodile as early on as he did. But that's just something Oda couldn't anticipate because he didn't know how long the series was going to run. Yeah. Another one I was always confused about was... um how strong Ace actually was compared to some of the other characters. Because really, we only saw him fight Blackbeard, kind of, and he lost. And then at Marineford, he did all right until he got, you know, punched through the stomach. So I wonder, like, how strong he is compared to the admirals and stuff like that. Like, I mean, when he was first introduced, he was a powerhouse, you know what I mean? Like, he pretty much set another standard yeah he did have that one confrontation with aokiji that made it seem like he was on fairly even footing with an admiral and he might have done okay against akainu if his if akainu's fruit wasn't you know the direct superior to aces and if he was actually fighting him rather than protecting luffy yeah which makes me wonder to be honest how strong blackbeard really is considering every time we've seen him fight he seems to you know take a beating even though he wins but he also managed to give Shanks that scar, so... Yeah, there's a lot more to Blackbeard than meets the eye. I don't think he ever really shows his full strength. Not to us, definitely. He definitely brings out that, you know, character uh, trait of being lazy and not showing your full strength until it's absolutely necessary in order to survive. Yeah, he... He's kind of like Luffy. Luffy doesn't really do that. Like, he never automatically goes gear forth in a fight. He'll always take a beating first and then get into things. Oh, you mean like Goku? Yeah, like Goku, who never goes Super Saiyan. 
who always tries to tackle it in his base form, and then he powers up once, gets smashed again, powers up again, gets smashed, etc., etc., until Ultra Instinct. Yeah, he's got five now, right? Five or six. It's like Super Saiyan oh. one, two, three, God, Blue instinct yeah it's six blue kaioken oh uh, yeah when they tried to make that a thing really all right who haven't we heard from radman and groot do you guys have any particular feelings on power scaling in one piece good or bad i actually haven't uh, seen like dragon ball or a lot of the others that have you know similar types of power scaling but i tend to really like uh the power scaling in one piece just because I feel like a lot of the techniques that Luffy develops aren't as, hey, you got a random power up out of nowhere, like a lot of other uh, manga and anime have. Really? Like when he just pulled Gear Second out of nowhere? <laughs> I tend to not think about Gear Second. Or when his fist catches on fire now, after he trained for two years. Yeah, that's a thing. What I like about One Piece is that they don't show training. Like, you skip all of that and you see the results. They don't really show how things are innovated, which is kind of annoying from a logical perspective. But at the same time, I love not having to see characters struggle to get stronger. They just do it. If that were to be the case, it would make One Piece uh, like a way longer series than it already is. If we see the, if we see like the training included. All I heard is training included. Uh, he said that if that were to be the case, then One Piece would be an even longer series than it already was. Because if he needed to show the training every time Luffy innovated something, or any of the Straw Hats, actually. Ah, well, thank Took you. Took the Shana. words right out of my mouth. I actually want to see, or I wish that they went back on the Gecko Moria and Kaido thing a little bit. Because I want to see how strong Moria was back then, or if Kaido has just gotten a lot stronger since then. Yeah, that's an interesting one. It implies that at one point Kaido was weaker to be considered a rival to Moria. Yeah, and considering the fact that Mingo could have just killed Moria at Marineford, like, and Mingo is afraid of Kaido. It's, you know. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing as the Shanks buggy scenario, though. They both probably started out as rookie pirates at pretty much the same level. And now Shanks is Shanks and, well, buggy is buggy. Yeah, that's that's the one thing that's kind of weird about the about One Piece is that they they were equals, but now it's buggy is so much stronger now. I don't know. I think something happened along the way because honestly, buggy has just never really cared about the one piece. So maybe after they got to Raftal or whatever, his whole outlook on things changed and Shanks didn't or Shanks's outlook went into a different direction. Mm, if indeed buggy went to Raftal, which I'd like to think he did. I'd like to think he did too, but just because he never seems interested in the One Piece, you know what I mean? Which I feel like hints at the fact that he knows what it is and it's just not for him. Yeah, like it's not treasure, so it's not for him. Of course, my theory on what the One Piece is, is just like nothing. Oh, very satisfactory. <laughs> well, that that's, yeah, I, that's my theory. My theory is that it's nothing. It's like an empty treasure chest or something like that. It's something that the Pirate King set out in order to encourage people and set set yeah. forth the age of pirates in order for somebody to want to grow strong enough to be his mm -hmm. successor. The One Piece was the adventure in your heart all along. Exactly. Yuck. Uh, Oda, Oda stated that it's it's actually going to be something. This was very early on in the series. Like, it is an actual quote-unquote treasure. So there is definitely something out there. Maybe it's something that's only relevant to D's, which is why Shunks, I mean, Shanks. <laughs> did you just say Shunks? Did you want to say my name? I did say Shunks, because I'm so used to saying it, or typing it. But uh, yeah, maybe it's something D-related, which is why Buggy and uh, Shanks seem to not even want to pursue it. Anyway, this is a big topic, so I'm going to stop that here. Uh, Shunk, since you are here, do you have a topic to present to the Reverie? Uh, <clears throat> well, actually, I was wondering, like, what do you guys think the next arc will be like after one? That, that's all. Yeah, that, that's my, my only curiosity yeah. at the moment. Thinking logically about it, I would say it'll probably be another mini arc like Zo, a kind of break because we'll all be sick of Wano in two years time. The next big arc though, like my money would be on something like Elbaf. Like I'm hoping for Elbaf. Uh, I personally think the next arc is going to be the Reverie 
finale. Ah, Reverie 2. I hope that the mini arc will like involve uh, info again because I am pretty like you know I'm I think like everyone here is like full of questions like who is this guy? What is his deal? Like how powerful is he? You know that kind of stuff. Like more, uh, I am more excited about the information that is you know about the drop in the coming years. Oh, that is a thing that we often get between arcs—a huge, right. massive information dump. So I'm always very excited for that. Uh, going back to the reverie thing, I I'm not sure if we'll see the rest of it. I think we might see what happened as a result of it, but not necessarily the reverie itself. Yeah, that's what I mean, like the the fallout. Yeah, yeah, that would be very cool. Like everything on Wano happened, and then we cut to the rest of the world and things have just changed. Buggy is now the Pirate King. Personally, if I had to take a guess, I would say, based on my limited knowledge compared to you all, uh, I would probably guess it would be a second Zoe arc. Maybe not like Zo 2, but you know, an arc like so. Well, that was a Zo 2 all along. Because, and, and the only reason I'm saying that is because they do have oh. Carrot still, and like they haven't said that she's actually going to be a member of the crew yet. And if I remember correctly, in Zo, they mentioned how they were lending their guys to the, the Straw Hats to go and do this thing, and then that they would like go back to Zoe at some point? Probably, yeah. I mean, the Minx will go back to Zoe at some stage. I have no idea what's going on with Carrot. I'm hoping that her story kind of gets tied up in Wano and that she's not just floating there like she was for Whole Cake Island. Yup. Find out in the next episode, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, uh, uh. If there will be a second piece, I will be so mad. <laughs> Imagine you don't so you find out there's a second piece. If that happens, Two I will be piece. blaming Troid or not Luffy. Yeah, we blame Cages and we demote Simp. That's what we do. Oh, Fuck yeah, we, we do. And then promote me to, to Pirate King. I will take over the server. Yeah, I don't think we, we ever do that. But now, are you five, there's a lot of you here, ready for One Piece trivia? Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, no. Well, uh, I'll be lucky to get one question, right? Let's do this. All right, since there are five of you, I think I'm going to take the top two of you into the finals so that we can have a nice four-way. So uh, no, let's test nice. our four-way. Phrasing. Thank you. Phrasing intentional. Let's test our buzzers starting with droid. Lucy. What? All right. <laughs> oh, yeah, Shunks, you have no idea what this is because you just got here. Basically, um, you say your name if you want to answer a question. First person to say their name gets to answer the question. Okay, then. Okay. Test your buzzer, Shunks. Potato. Excellent. Although we already have another potato, but he's not in this round, so hurrah. God damn it. Code Red, test your buzzer, please. Code Red. Lovely. Radman, test your buzzer. Wyatt. And finally, Tactical Groot, can you please test your buzzer? Groot. What? All right, we shall begin. Question one. Which character in the series was born on April Fool's Day? Code Red. Code Red. Fuck, I know. Uh, since uh, I'm going to get all these questions wrong, I might as well take a stab at them. Anyways, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, Buggy. Is incorrect. Lucy. Ha ha ha. Droid. All right, I'm just going to guess, too, and I'm going to say Usopp. Usopp is 100% correct. The liar is born on April Fool's Day. That, that makes sense. You're lucky. Next question. Which prominent figure was responsible for guarding the Thousand Sunny during the two-year time skip? Wyatt. Dude, Dude. I believe I heard Wyatt first. What? Kuma. Or... It, P, it, pacifist is zero, whatever they called him at that point. Either is acceptable. Kuma is correct. The one question I could have gotten right. And you didn't. Well, I mean, I would have, but I just didn't get in in time. It's all right. Plenty more questions to come. What technique did Nami use to defeat Miss Doublefinger? Fuck. Groot. Groot. The, thunder, uh, the lightning tempo. No, she did use that, but that did not defeat Miss Doublefinger. Wyatt. Born tempo. Wyatt. Was it Mirage tempo? No, that was against Califa. 
Uh, she also did use it against Miss Doublefinger, I think, but not to defeat her. Sexy kind of I can't even remember who Doublefinger is. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the Brokeworks agent partner to Mr. One. The oh. one that, that walks like really, I don't know, I don't know how to call that. Who walks weird. Yes, the one who walks weird. Shunks has it. Code red? Code red? Question mark? <laughs> uh, I really don't know, but nobody else has given the answer. So maybe she used, uh, did she just bash her with the baton at the end to, to knock her out? She did not. This is not a trick question. And none of you have got it, so I'm just going to say that it was Tornado Tempo. Fuck, I wanted to say oh. that shit! Damn. I was about to say Tornado, fuck! This is all your fault, droid. It usually is. Now I'm crying again. But, in any case, next question. Where in the world would you find the location Gioncord Plaza? Eh? Fuck. I'll say it again. Where in the world would you find the location Gion Cord Plaza? Uh, Water 7. Is incorrect. Code Damn red. You. Code red. I can't remember the name of the island, but it, it's the island where uh, Gold Roger got executed. Logtown, and that is incorrect. Damn. Wyatt. Wyatt. Is it Fishman Island. Fishman Island is 100% correct. Gionkod Plaza is where the Straw Hats fought the, what, 100,000 fishmen? Oh, that's what oh. that was called. Which character has the following laugh? Fair, 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 fair. Wyatt. Oh, Foxy. Fox. Wyatt. Fox. Foxy, that stupid piece of crap. <laughs> is correct. Foxy, that stupid piece of crap <laughs> is correct. <laughs> bonus points and with that we are concluding this round of trivia uh the rad man you are advancing to the finals as is droid because you got a question right oh wow this is my first time in the finals but this is also my first time at the river wow why am i not surprised i didn't get any questions right same i mean you knew some you just weren't quite quick enough i was pretty freaking quick okay it's just oh yeah. then then why are you on zero points why are you on zero? Ooh. Because, because I'm dumb and stupid, that's why. Fair enough. And with that, I would like to thank Code Red, Shunks, and Tactical Groot. Droid and the Radman, you can stay in the chat for the finals, and I would like to invite Tess, and who was the other winner? Chloe, that's right, back into the chat for the trivia finals. Welcome, everyone. Hello again. Hello. Hello. Hi, All right. For the sake of posterity, we are going to test everyone's buzzers again, starting with Droid. Lucy. Beautiful. Chloe. Chloe. Marvelous. Tess. Tess. And Wyatt. Wyatt. Question one. When Vivi was a member of Baroque Works, what was her code name? Chlo Tess. Chloe. 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 Um, Miss Wednesday. Is correct. One point. What is the name of the original captain of the Rumbar Pirates? Chloe. Chloe. Uh, Yorkie. Yes, I'll accept that. Calico Yorkie. Who was Captain Morgan ultimately defeated by? Chloe. Oh, Lucy. Chloe. Uh, it was Luffy, right? Is incorrect. Wyatt. Yep. Okay. It was all the Wyatt. Wyatt. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Zora is correct, Wyatt. Ugh. I was about to say it. <laughs> Second of doubt. Well done, Wyatt. Yay. Prior to the time skip, how many arms was Nico Robin able to sprout at any given time? Chloe. Yes, Chloe. Gonna take a wild guess and say 16. Is very incorrect. Tess. Okay. Tess. I think it was like 100. It is exactly 100. Oh, wow. Nice. Okay. Which character has the following laugh? Foss, 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 foss. Yeah, Tess. Oh, my God. Tess. Hogback. Is correct again. Well done, Tess. Just a quick update on scores. We have Chloe on two, Tess on two, Wyatt on one, and Droid on zero. But there are more questions to come. Until recently, 
Which island served as the base of operations for the Revolutionary Army? Tess. Chloe. Tess, you were first. Oh, no. Baltigo. Baltigo is correct. <laughs> uh, I need to be faster. Which character said the following? A man's dream will never die. Chloe. Chloe. Uh, Blackbeard. Is correct. How much was the reward listed on Luffy's third bounty? Chloe. Chloe. Uh, 300 million. Is correct again. Droid, you realize you're playing, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I just, uh, Chloe's just too fast. So I'm just talking to Emhoff and, and Billo and all these lovely people in the text chat. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Who is the 14th daughter of Charlotte Lin Lin? Tess. Tess. I think that's pudding. Is incorrect. Chloe. Chloe. Is it bru brulee? Is also incorrect. Would anyone else like a stab? Is it the one from Moria's Island? Thriller Bark? You didn't buzz in, so I don't know who you are, but it's not. Ah, Lucy, so I'm wrong. Yes. All right, who have we got left? One of you hasn't had a guess at this. I haven't had a guess, but I'm trying to think who it would be. I, Chloe. No, no, no. Wyatt has priority. Know, anyway. Yeah. Is it that one that... It's not that one that shoots Luffy with the dart in the certain fight that's kind of spoilery at this point. It is not, no. Alright, it's open to all of you again. Alright, droid. I mean, droid. Lucy. Lucy, whatevs. Smoothie. Is correct! Yeah, that was my... <laughs> uh, well done, droid. Captain Nozumi is a marine best known for associating with which pirate? Chloe. Chloe. Uh, Arlong. Is correct. What is the name of Marco's devil fruit? Tess. I don't know Tess. One. It's unknown right now. That is 100% correct. You saw through my trick question. It is currently uh -huh. unnamed. Nice. There are currently two questions remaining. Chloe is on five points. Tess is on four points. Wyatt is on one point, as is Droid. Which character has the following laugh? Wee 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 wee. What the fuck? Not another laugh one. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Wee 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 wee. Tess. Tweeting. Yes, Tess. Tweeting. That sounds like Foxy. I think. It's not Foxy. No. He is. <laughs> Chloe. You're quite good at that. Chloe. You're quite good at that. Gonna take a wild guess and say Caesar. No, Caesar is sure. No, 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 no. It wasn't Moria's, was it? No. Moria's is she, 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 she. This one is we, 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 we. It sounds like an evil person, but like a. It. I'll give you that. It is an evil person. Oh my god, Billo has it completely. What a legend. A big noise. Oh, that was too strong a hint. I don't think they we, do got this. We really don't, <laughs> Billo. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. These laugh questions. Are I got it now, but I have to wait for the rest to get it. Well, to go again. You know what? You don't. Who is it? Who is it? Okay, Tess. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, yes. it's Brulee. It is Charlotte Brulee. Yeah, I'm not that far, so. <laughs> I'm not I either. I just got the reflection part. No. I don't remember that at all. Yeah, neither. These laugh I questions. I forget are... her as a character entirely. I just, I'm like at that part like in the bird. anime. I've heard it like yesterday. All right, this is very exciting. We have one question left, and Chloe and Tess are both on five points. Droid and Wyatt are also here. <laughs> Droid, especially. <laughs> Your final question. Sanji once claimed that Nami was a certain percentage of the reason why he joined the Straw Hat Pirates. What was Chloe. the percentage? Chloe. 80. 
Incorrect. Tess? Tess. I believe it was 90. Is also incorrect. Oh my god, Billo, how do you know that? Did you look that up? You can pretty much Google it. I mean, you can. I'll give you both another guess. Closest to the percentage wins. Tess, 100. Tess says 100. Very safe. Chloe? 95. Technically, Tess is the winner. Sanji claimed that Nami was 98.72% of oh, the reason no. why he joined the straw. Hat <laughs> I was going to guess oh, I was going to guess specific? 99. No. <laughs> why so why so specific? I was going to say 99. <laughs> So Why congratulations, like Tess. That? You are the winner of the third Grand Line Review Reverie Trivia. A yeah. Of applause you, for you. You deserve my beer. Chloe, you were a fine runner-up. Uh, and like I said, Droid and Wyatt, thanks for trying. I you told KSA I was going to take the role off him. Why did you fail, Droid? Actually, I've noticed there are a lot of people with the Trivia Master role that maybe don't quite deserve it. KSA was the last one to win. Considering there's only supposed to be one Trivia Master at any given time. Honestly, Billo, if we can find a way for you to participate, I think that would be too unbalanced. Oh, what a tactical hazard as well. What? what? <laughs> Sienna and KSA are the only... Two winners and I'll tell you what, Billo, maybe we could organize a thing where it's like you versus five people. I think that would be fair. Yeah, that's that's fair. All right, that's a very good point, Potato. And that concludes the proceedings of the reverie. Thank you all very much for showing up once more. And we will reconvene in a month's time. You may now talk to your heart's content. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Well, congratulations. We only have five people here. We could do that thing now. Troy versus five. It's also like almost three a.m. over there. <laughs> Jesus. We could, but I'm out of questions. <laughs> well, I better go do college so I don't fail that. Bye. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye Thanks bye. For coming. How dare you! Uh, I don't Coliseum is incorrect. <laughs> Press A to do it. I wanted to freaking die when it was a uh, tornado, tornado tempo. I, I it actually I actually wanted to scream. <laughs> that that's so that bad. La that last question made me want to scream. <laughs> You really should have said 99 just to fuck I should have gone with my gut. <laughs> because, like, uh, if you say 99, he says 100. You've got, you know, 99% chance of winning. Yeah, well... <laughs> really, you should have said 99.9%. The, th .9%. the thing, the thing <laughs> is... <laughs> the thing is, Tess said the buzzer and then went for the answer straight away. So I didn't get a chance. <laughs> Yeah, yeah so I'll get there next, next time. Next February. Yeah. Chloe, is Chloe is probably the most probably consistent, the consistent trivia player. Trivia that player. isn't Billow. I need to work on my laugh. Technically, I am the most consistent, as this was my first. Same. What is Droid happening? Is also here. <laughs> yeah, this is my first, too. I remember Droid, you made the finals. You should be proud. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> you answered happened. a total of two questions correctly and was a finalist. <laughs> <laughs> yep. What is that? that is... Sounds like shunks. <sighs> <laughs> hey, that's why me? Like... What the... No, 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 that's not me. No, no. Oh, you had no clue. No... And notice how the sound wonder... stops when he starts speaking. Yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah exactly. Yep. I wonder where Karu was this fine night. Yeah, Being Karu. a duck. Being a duck, probably. This was surprisingly fun. Although, uh, it, that's the surprisingly is in reference to the trivia. Yeah, I'm glad I you enjoyed it. I think yeah. trivia is very this was actually This was actually a good trivia. I like this. What are you saying about the previous trivia, Chloe? Clearly, this trivia, <laughs> one, trivia was well, horrible one, and awful and should be re, 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 like, redone because I didn't win. <laughs> well, Obviously. one. Where's Miss Piggy? I'm not, I'm not saying any of the trivias were bad. I'm just saying one had Sienna and the other had uh, Karu.
All right. So you think this is the trivia you had the best chance at? Yeah, pretty much. 